Um, the next poem, I'm going to uh, invite someone to join me. Um, and he knows who he is. <laughs> so look, find someone in the room who looks really terrified, and it's him. Um, here he is. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you. Um, I've written a poem called Viella Rue, which is um, a term, a very old term for hurdy-gurdy. And there's not many times a poet gets to read a poem called Viella Rue with a hurdy-gurdy in the room. So this is just a joy for me. Thank you so much, Paul. Um, it's a narrative poem, so it's a story. And it's set, in my mind, it's set in occupied Paris. Um, and there's a couple there, Mr. and Mrs. Septo. Mr. Septo plays the hurdy-gurdy on the streets for a few coins. They're very, very poor and it's very, very cold. And he has a monkey, which um, he believes brings in extra money. And, but Mrs. Septo does not like the monkey. So it's about this reconciliation between Mrs. Septo and the monkey. And Paul is very kindly going to join me. So this poem is called Viel Aru. Small black hands are buried in Septo's silver hair. And where feet dance and grip, his overcoat shoulder shines with grease. The monkey brings in extra, he says, but according to Septo's wife, only fleas. Each night she attacks the spill of change, lips moving and one finger sliding it coin by coin into the tin. Two wrinkled faces watch her turn from table to cooker and back again, banging down three plates, three cups, three spoons. But when the winter gnaws at her bones and Mrs. Septo slumps half-dressed and helpless, the monkey laces her boots, fingers and teeth tugging at leather. For a moment, she cradles its head and feels the inhuman heat and as its deep brown eyes meet hers, birds drop scarlet feathers and shimmering columns of light descend from cathedral trees. Septo's snoring fills the room with the stink of breath. Grey clouds skim chimney pots as Mrs. Septo rocks and rocks, the monkey plays a silent tune on the buttons of her blouse. Thank you. Thank you so much for it. Aren't we lucky to have music in our lives? It's fantastic. Seeing as we're in a gallery, I'm going to do the gallery poem. And this gallery poem is about a Hogarth painting, which was painted in 1726. And it's about um, an event that happened in real life, a news event. And um, I'm sure if it happened today, it would have been on the one show. Um, as it was, it was 1726, and Hogarth painted it. The poem was about a woman who apparently gave birth to rabbits, and um, her name was Mary Tofts, and it was a big hoax. A lot of physicians were fooled by this incredible thing that happened, and I loved the idea of this woman giving birth to rabbits, and I took it one step further and imagined the father being there. When Mary Toft gave birth to rabbits, the midwife lifted her eyes, then raised her bloodied hands, cupped and offering me the chance to cry out or fall in love as fathers do. 
I am a Waterloo sweep who knows how to lay out sheets, the weight of brushes and rods. I've seen tumbling rooks clap up a storm of soot, but my stare makes no sense of this. No crumpled face, no fists, no kicking feet. This baby is in six parts, each one stirring, each one blind. The midwife fills her lap and with an apron corner begins to rub squirming scraps of fur. She nods to the other three. There are many things a father can do when faced with this. I can think of none. And tugging out a shirt tail, I begin to smooth a tiny head, back and ears. Sunflower sex. Sunflower sex is loud. Here they are, barely dressed in tiny frills as hollow stalks thrust them whooping into the sky. Van Gogh heard it, saw how fast yellow bunting shrivels and falls. Quick! A black and white army of seed must ripen here. Birds hop along fences, sharpening their beaks. If we could draw things and um, they came to life, wouldn't that be fabulous? We'd all be artists, wouldn't we? Be brilliant. This is imagining someone in a world where things can be drawn and they can come to life. The poem is called Draw. A man gave me this dog. Because he drew her, she's only got two legs. But from the side, she looks just fine. I won her in a game of dice, an eight throw. She's got an alligator grin that keeps away kids and thugs. Go ahead, she won't bite. She only looks that white because the guy drew her at night when he was rat ass drunk. I heard he drew a man a house, an IOU on the 215. It had a garden with a tree, but it belonged to Skelky Murray, and you don't draw what isn't yours. There are rules. I tried it once, licked the lead and drew a coin, tried to spend it, but it was a dud. Guess I don't have an eye for art. But next time I play Leonardo, I'll sleeve an ace, make him draw me a girl, and if he's not too drunk, I'll get him to draw her from the front. 